2024 is going to be massively bullish. I want you to take a look at the halving years. I want you to take a look at the returns, right? 2012, we had the Bitcoin halving year. Now, I don't have data for 2012, but I am assuming, you know, based on the performance of Bitcoin back in 2012, I am going to assume the Bitcoin was crazy bullish back in 2012. And I'm going to show you so you guys don't think I'm making this up. I want to make sure I show you exactly what we're looking at. This chart goes all the way back to 2012. This was the performance of Bitcoin in 2012. All right, let's zoom in. In 2012, you have month one right here. So January, Bitcoin was bullish. February, bullish. Uh, this is March, this is April, May bullish. That's three positive uh, month, uh, months, excuse me. Uh, so one, two, three, four. May was bullish, that's four. June was bullish, that's five. July was bullish, that's six. August was bullish, that's seven. September was bullish, that's eight. All right. November was bullish, that's 9. December was bullish, that's 10. Excuse me, 10. Uh, 10. No, not 10, actually. That's 9. Uh, 10. No, 9. 9. Excuse me, 9, guys. Unless I made a mistake somewhere. All right? So in 2012, three months out of 2012. One, two, three, okay? So I think I made a mistake when I was counting. Somewhere I made a mistake. But anyway, in 2012, three months out of the 12th, Bitcoin was bullish. So for nine months, Bitcoin was bullish in 2012. And you know what, what happened in 2012? In 2012, we had our first Bitcoin halving. In 2016, we had our second Bitcoin halving. I want you to take a look at the performance of Bitcoin in 2016. I'm, I'm going to stay on this chart right here. So let's go look at 2016. Uh, 2016 right here, January 2016. All right, this is January 2016 right here. All right, so January 2016, Bitcoin was red. But I want us to count how many green months in 2016. You have one right here, February. You have two, April. You have three, May. You have four, June. You have 5 September, you have 6 October, you have 7 November, and you have 10, uh, you have 8 December. All right? So in 2016, Bitcoin was bullish 8 months out of the 12. 8 months out of the 12, Bitcoin was bullish. 2016 was the Bitcoin halving year. Right? And eight months out of the 12, Bitcoin was bullish. Now, let's take a look at 2020. And remember, in 2020, we had a once in a lifetime pandemic. Something that crushed the price of Bitcoin, I believe 50%, if not 60%, in a matter of hours. But let's take a look at the performance of Bitcoin in 2020. All right? In 2020, Bitcoin was bullish in January. So that's one. Bitcoin was bullish in April. That's two. Bitcoin was bullish in May. That's three. Bitcoin was bullish in July. That's four. Bitcoin was bullish in August. That's five. Bitcoin was bullish in October. That's six. Bitcoin was bullish in November. That's seven. Bitcoin was bullish in December. That is eight. In 2020, Eight months out of the 12, Bitcoin was bullish. And again, what was 2020? 2020 for Bitcoin was the halving year, right? This was the halving year. Now, in 2020, eight months out of the, out of the 12, Bitcoin was bullish. In 2016, eight months out of the 12, Bitcoin was bullish. In 2012, 
nine months out of the 12, Bitcoin was bullish. So based on that data, 2024, the price of Bitcoin or Bitcoin is more likely to be bullish for eight to nine months out of the 12 months of 2024, right? I want to make sure that you guys see what's, what's happening right here and what 2024 is more likely to look like. Now, someone else may have, you know, different anal uh, analysis. Someone else may have a different picture of what 2024 is going to look like. But if 2024 is anything on like 2020, 2016, and 2012, then for the first time, you know, for the first time in the history of Bitcoin, we no longer in the cycles. Like we are no longer following the Bitcoin cycles or the crypto cycles or the Bitcoin halving narrative. If 2024 is unlike the previous three halving year years, all right? If 2024 is unlike the previous three halving years, then for the first time, we have something else that is happening and we need to start analyzing Bitcoin completely different. But based on historical data, and as you guys know, you know, history doesn't always, always repeat, but it often rhymes. If 2024 is anything like 2020, 2016, and 2012, for majority of 2024, Bitcoin is going to be bullish. And that is how we get a $40,000 Bitcoin. And that is how we get a $40,000 Bitcoin before summer of 2024 or sometimes as we head into the Bitcoin halving in April. And that is how we get a new all-time high in 2024. All right. So I hope you guys can see exactly what I'm seeing. I hope you can see the reason I'm very passionate about accumulating right now, because I don't think there is a better time to prepare for 2024 than the last couple months of 2023. And if 2024 and 2025 are going to be bullish, the people that are going to maximize profits are the people that don't accumulate in 2024, that don't accumulate in 2025, the people that accumulate in 2023 are the ones that are going to maximize profits. Now, we can also simplify this, all right? Just in case you guys don't want to be looking at, you know, hundreds of monthly candles, we can look at the yearly candles, all right? We have the data right here, ladies and gentlemen. We have the data right here. And I want you guys to take a look at this. Again, these are the early days, so we don't have a lot of data. But I want you guys to take a look at this. You have a red month right here. And the following two months, I mean, Jesus Christ, you have a red year right here. And the following two years are green. You have a red year right here. And the following two, did I say the following two months right here? Or the following two years. So anyways, a red year right here and the following two years are green. You have a red year. The following three years are green. You have a red year. The following three years are green. You have a red year. So the question is, the following three candles 
are they going to be green or red? All right. These following, all right, including this one, these three candles that we are going to have, are they going to be green or are they going to be red? If you want to ask me, they are going to be green. I think 2023 is going to be green. I think 2024 is going to be green. And I do think 2025 is also going to be green. Right? So this right here is going to be green. So the only re the only way for 2023 now to be green, Bitcoin will have to drop below $15,500. So if you want to predict, you know, basically a 50% crash in the price of Bitcoin from now until the very last day of December, then, you know, have some fun. Go ahead and predict that. Okay? If you also want to predict that 2024 is going to be red, go ahead, have some fun predicting that. And if you also want to predict, you know, 2025 is going to be red. And again, by all means, you know, go ahead and have some fun, you know, make those predictions. My predictions are that we are done with red yearly candles until, until 2027. Uh, excuse me, 2026. Until 2026. I think we are done with red yearly candles. And what that means, if you want to simplify your investments, if you want to make things simple, straightforward, and you don't have to stress about price up and down, right? You can invest based on yearly candles. So I'll give you an example. If you invest right now, you know, you basically invest in for 2024. You don't have to look at the chart of Bitcoin until December of 2024. You put money in right now at $29,000. If Bitcoin goes to 24,000, who cares? That is in between. What you care about is where the, the yearly candle is going to close. That is what you care about. All right. So this right here, guys, is really analyzing, you know, made it simple. You know, none of that extra stuff where we got to talk about, you know, a continuation of an uptrend. Right. The price needs to stay above this. If Bitcoin goes to this target, this is going to going to invalidate this. Right. Like none of that talk right here, guys. If you want to make things a little bit more simple. You know, cleary more visual you know stevie wonder can see this and see exactly what's happening 